when I asked uh, the co-pilot here in this program that I'm using about the last card, it will be the alien card, right? And co-pilot says, that sounds intriguing. Are you referring to a game or perhaps a story you're working on? I'd love to hear more about it. And they posted alien emoji, right? And some stars. So then I just simply typed Carol Rosin, which I misspoke in that video that I did where I was talking about the last card will be the alien card. It wasn't Catherine Austin Fitz. Um, it was Carol Rosin. Okay. Just wanted to put that out there. I misspoke. Um, anyway, co-pilot says, Carol Rosin is a well-known aerospace executive and advocate for the peaceful use of space. She is particularly famous for her work with Werner von Braun, a prominent rocket scientist, right? Rosin has spoken about von Braun's warnings regarding the potential militarization of space and the so-called alien card, in quotation marks, which he allegedly mentioned as a final step in a series of manufactured threats to justify space-based weapons, which they are putting out there right now, aren't they? And then co- Co-pilot asked me, are you interested in her views on space policy or perhaps her work with Von Braun? So I'd like to know about the alien card concept. And co-pilot responds, the alien card concept is often associated with Carol Rosin's recounting of Werner Von Braun's warnings. According to Rosin, Von Braun suggested that the final justification for weaponizing space would be a fabricated alien threat. This alien card, in quotation marks, would be the last in a series of manufactured threats following others like terrorism and asteroids, both we're experiencing, right? to convince the public and governments to support space-based weapons. This idea has sparked much debate and speculation, particularly among those concerned about the militarization of space and the potential for misinformation. It's a fascinating topic that touches on issues of security, ethics, and the future of space exploration. Is there a specific aspect of this concept that interests you the most? I, what I find interesting is Copilot's response. And in all of this that we're experiencing right now with the terrorism, the asteroid that threats, the solar threats, the threat of a, a magnetic pole reversal, the threat of space weather, I mean, the threat of global warming and this threat of these extreme weather changes and everything like that, manufactured threats, okay? That's not just a made-up term, okay, like conspiracy theory is, like conspiracy, the word conspiracy. Manufactured threats. We have been exposed to these for a very long time, and it has been the justification that they have used to do all kinds of things against the public's will, okay? Because maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the majority of the population don't really want them doing this whole Star Wars thing and fulfilling this whole Star Wars agenda. But it's very clear, you know, that we're really not being given too much of a choice, okay? They're moving forward with their projects, all right? And all we can do is just play our part. We're all just actors on this stage after all, right? And I am playing the part of the skeptic. OK, I am the one that's out there trying to present information and share information with people so that when you come across a video or something where someone's talking about aliens and deep space UFOs and stuff like that, that through my content and through my opinion, and that's all that it is. It's my opinion and it's my viewpoint that I'm putting out there. OK, as an actor on the world stage, I'm playing the role of the skeptic. I'm going to put information out there that's going to counter the narrative of the alien invasion because I'm one of those people that does not consent to the militarization of outer space and space-based weapons. Because I think that is also just a cover story. Because really what's going on up there is these space agencies and these space gurus attempting to build infrastructure and build this little deep space world up there so that people can go up there on a big giant Disney amusement ride of sorts to have fun up in the cosmos. They're creating this big, huge sky wonderland, okay, for the space enthusiasts. That's what I think anyway. And this whole thing of, of having to put up all of this stuff up there for our protection to save us, to help protect our national security. That's what it's for, really. I mean, they're still playing that card hard. They have been playing that card for decades. It's always going to be for our own good, right? for our protection. Don't worry, it's for your protection, right? Never mind the fact that there's all these big space agencies and all these big billionaires and millionaires all investing in space travel and to create safe spaces up there by debriding all of the stuff that supposedly is whirling and whirling around up there. I don't know if y'all have seen this before, but this supposedly is a model of all of the satellite systems and stuff. And it shows this graveyard orbit, okay, which they admittedly, through NRL admits that when they inject something up there into this current, and that's what I believe that it is, there's a current that flows around us 
that was influenced and being directed with a lot of them nuclear detonations that they did decades ago. They influenced this upper atmosphere and this flow of air and this electric current. And they inject things up there using helium, okay, to keep it adrift. And they inject it into this current. And this current keeps it going. It's like putting uh, a piece of rice in a bowl of water and swirling it around. That little piece of rice is going to swirl around with that flow and that current. And as long as you have things in here and objects that are influencing that current, and you can take over that current, and then you can begin to control that current, okay? But they claim that after they've injected something up there, and it becomes what they term spent, they just let it go ahead and drift off into the graveyard orbit. You know, they have a graveyard orbit up there, much like they have a graveyard out here in our, uh, down here in our oceans at ground level, where they just drop all their spent rockets, right? So, I don't know. Um, I guess... The point of this video really was to just share this interesting response from Copilot, where I asked about the last card will be the alien card. Okay, I, I'm just putting it out there right now. I am the skeptic. I am the one that's going to attempt to present information that would suggest some of what we're seeing has got to do with these space projects. You got Elon Musk launching NRL's first batch of next generation spy satellites. But it's, it's yeah, because it's for our safety. We need them to be up there with cameras, scrutinizing and tracking our every move for our own safety, right? Rocket Lab launches mysterious spy satellites and fourth ever U.S. liftoff. The live and let fly mission sent secret payloads aloft for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office. I don't consent. Do we get to vote on it? Because some of these missions that the NRL does would suggest these people are involved with something a whole lot deeper than what they're telling the public. Some of these patches and some of this stuff has got some pretty like demonic and satanic type of like symbolism in it. It's like, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? And I don't consent to you shooting stuff up there and drifting around stuff and leaving stuff up there in your freaking gravi graveyard orbit. These people have taken too much liberty when it comes to this stuff, folks. I'm telling you, they've taken too many liberties. When do we really get a say in all of this? 